like the busyness is where I see myself. And his answer was that like, you know, after he was, you know, done with the military, he just wanted to like settle down to like a suburban city in like Oregon, like by the forest and like meet a nice girl and have like three kids. And I was kind of just like, nope, nope. Nope, no, 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 no. Hello and welcome to DNK with Diana and Evan. My name is Diana. And I'm Evan, and this is a podcast about complaining and figuring out what kind of people we want to be. So we have something planned um, that's a little different today. We're going to take the 16 personalities Myers Briggs test. And actually, when I say take, I mean, we already took it and we are going to talk about our uh, impressions. We came prepared. This test. Obviously. Yes, we We came prepared. We prepared an outline and everything for you guys. Yes, because we we figured you didn't want to listen to us talk about our answers to a bunch of questions. Um, We feel like you would rather listen to the results of that. Anyways, so um, Diana, do you want to give some background about um the the Myers Briggs test yes. specifically not the 16 personalities test yes so the 16 personalities test um was based on a theory by Carl G Jung he was a psychologist that developed the theory of even having a psychological type in the 1920s and Isabel Briggs Meyer was the person that developed the MBTI tool which um was used and incorporated to create these various psychological types described by uh, Carl Jung. And so the 16 personalities test is a test you can take very accessibly online. I'm sure you've heard of it and seen it in dating online apps where people (laughs) include their acronym to, you know, characterize themselves. Um, A huge thing to note is that um, all these types, they're, they vary and they're different and they're equal. So there's no like best type or anything except mine and Evans. Mm. Oh yes. <laughs> Cause we actually share the same exact personality type, yeah. which is really scary when I think about it. Cause I hate you so much, Diana. Dude, but it um, explains so much. Does it not like how, yeah, how well we get so, along in our train of thoughts? Yeah. I, I feel like people who are the same wouldn't get along, but, um, that's only partially true in this case. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> um, so there are um, like there are five um, codes within your um, Myers Briggs type, um, specifically with um, sixteen personalities. There's generally yes. four in the general Myers Briggs, and uh, sixteen personalities adds a fifth one. These things measure sensation, intuition, feeling, thinking. And for 16 personalities, there's an additional one for stress management. You have two options or two possibilities to be within each category. Um, you can So for the first one, it's extroversion versus introversion. The second is sensing versus intuition. The third is thinking versus feeling. The fourth is judging versus perceiving. And the last one is assertive versus turbulent. And while some of these sound like they have better connotations than the other, again, it's important to know that everyone's personality type is equal and it, it exists so we can learn to appreciate the differences between us. But that being said, um, so Diana and I are ENFPT, um, which is the campaigner. And we both took this test. The campaigner. Yeah, we both took this test last week and we have very similar results in a way that like like i look at i'm looking at the percentages that we both have for each code and it looks Yo, kind of it's freaky it's exactly the same on on the into on the intuition portion in- intuition yeah yes. and it's it's just really freaky so i'm excited to talk to her I'm about not excited. um I, I don't know why i'm just, i'm i feel like i'm addressing the should i be addressing them or you oh um but anyway so i break the fourth wall <laughs> Uh, so I'm excited to talk to you about um, why these are so similar in our impressions about this. So, anyways, um, so what? So your pers- should we? Um, so yeah, let's talk about. Wait, what do you want to talk about? I was just, I just wanted to give them because they can't see the percentage chart that we see, mm-hmm. like how close. Like, there's not much of a big margin between our percentage differences. So uh, maybe we can just list the category real quick. 
yeah. or each acronym and what percentage I got and then what percentage you got. Yeah. So for extroversion, I got 76. And I got 74. Oh, wait, I think it's a, it, so, you know, should we list what ENFPT stands for? Before? R- oh, right. Yes. Yes. So uh, ENFPT, uh, it's extroverted, intuitive, feeling, prospecting, and turbulent. And these are the dominant um, codes within each, uh, within each section of the Myers Briggs test. Mm-hmm. Anyways, so um, you're seventy six for extroverted. I'm seventy four. Intuition. We got the same. Sixty seven percent. Spooky. That's really weird. Um. Anyway, so for feeling is I think is I see it's the biggest difference between yes, our yes. Um, personality types. You got 71% and I got 56%. Yeah. Meaning I got a whopping 71. Yeah, you feel a lot more than me. And you're cold hearted. Yes. Yes. I've been hardened by online dating and all of that junk. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> and then, so then the other one's prospecting. I got 53%. I got 60. Mm-hmm. And then turbulent. Um, I got 68 and you got i got 65 yeah so so not too big of a difference yeah feeling uh, so the biggest difference between us is only how uh, it's like feeling 15 percent for one set yeah 15 percent uh i can't do math um but we're not we weren't math majors we were not math majors clearly um i have to pull out my calculator whenever <laughs> i calculate tip anyways um so enfpt uh the campaigner um, I think we should generally describe what the the campaigner is. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, a phrase that caught out to me about this personality type is that they are described as a true free spirit. Although that can connotate to sort of being like the life of the party, they emphasize that this personality type really just enjoys the social and emotional connection they make with people, which I think resonates heavily with me. Uh, mm-hmm. They're described as charming. I definitely agree with that. <laughs> Independent. <laughs> oh, yeah. Is humble also one of our personality traits? <laughs> no. <laughs> Compassionate is, though. Don't forget charming. Okay, charming. I really like the word charming. <laughs> yeah, you should put that in your uh, dating profile. So uh, in the description of what the campaigner is um, on 16 personalities, um, they they say that that you have this, this little spark of of madness how would you react to um that i think i'm a little crazy sometimes you oh yeah i agree i think you're a little crazy sometimes um (laughs) crazy with passion yeah crazy with freedom (laughs) hello and humility obviously but yeah crazy with empathy (laughs) Crazy. (laughs) i feel like that's an oxymoron but whatever um i (laughs) do do you spend a lot of time exploring your social relationships like this generalizes about you huh i definitely consider myself to be very analytical and introspective with certain friendships i do feel like i re-examine constantly like it's hard for me to not sort of try to like perceive an action or a thought if that makes sense Mm -hmm. it's uh yeah that you it says that you um, are sensitive when you step on someone else's toes. Like, yeah, like your empathy extends very far. Oh, yes. Yeah. That being said, you know, they do describe this personality type as, you know, I guess outwardly having like a large circle of friends and like attraction, like attracting a lot of people because um, they like to be involved in other people's lives. And, you know, I would say that's the case for me. Do you agree with that sentiment? Uh, I agree with that. I I read this and like think about like how that's just like a distillation of who I am as a person, and then their their empathy and sociability make them easy to like bring in other people. Um, they're imaginative and they they dream big. Yes. Um, and they um, there's a suddenness to them that surprises people and like i i agree like on a general sense like yeah i i feel like i can do that i I think we can get into like a our impressions about the the 16 personalities test from here because i think it it asks you Mm -hmm. to to make a lot of generalizations about yourself 
mm-hmm. when you are mm-hmm. answering situational and behavioral questions. Mm-hmm. Um, so for those of you that haven't taken the test or have not taken it in a while, basically what the 16 personalities test does is it gives you a few dozen questions that you can answer in under, I think that what they say is under 12, 12 minutes. under 12 minutes. Yes. Yeah. And basically you're given a situation or a behavior that, um, you're placed in and then you have to go, I, I agree or I disagree with this and then you have three levels in which you can like agree and disagree with it or you can pick neutral but they encourage you to pick strong answers and not be neutral um, and they encourage mm-hmm. you to be honest about yourself and to not to not think that like oh no like if I get I as a personality type then then I'm going to be like some hermit so it encourages you to be true to who you are when you take it mm-hmm. um, so how do you feel about kind of placing these situations or placing yourself into these situations and then giving a very definite like level two agree level three disagree neutral kind of answer like that something that's very it's very final in this sense i feel like that pressured me a little more because some of the questions you know as the disclaimer says you know try to not to leave any neutral answers it was hard for me to read a certain question or statement in a definitive way because sometimes the situation wouldn't really like apply to anything in my life. Um, like for instance, I'm looking at a question now and it says, you often find yourself lost in thought when you are walking in nature. I don't even like go out that much, so I wouldn't be <laughs> outside walking, obviously. So my first thought is, you know, I would heavily disagree because the context doesn't apply to me. But I found that I had to sort of, you know, understand the concept of the question rather than the specificity of it. So instead of, you know, literally taking it as like walking out door, um, I figured it was thinking like, oh, I'm the type of person that fantasizes a lot, you know. If I'm, you know, not in, I guess, a, like, crowded or, like, social public spot. And so for that one, I believe I put I lightly agree, which is the most, the most right. Like, the first level? Yeah, the most right of the agree spectrum. So it's, like, just left of, like, the neutral, the neutral option in the middle. Okay. Oh, so how this is arranged is there's, there's seven circles, like, agrees on one side, disagrees on the other side, neutrals in the middle. And then basically you pick how close you are to agree and disagree um, in yeah. case that's not clear. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And like there, there are questions here. I'm, I, I just found it um, where it's kind of like there is a clear negative connotation with the um, with these word with the language they use in. Yeah. Can you, the can you give so, us an example? So you are often envious of others. Like, yes, I, I put like slightly like disagree so the first level of disagreeing um Mm -hmm. because and and i don't know if that's a fully honest interpretation of who i am because like you look at other people and you go oh like i wish i had that or like oh that's that'd be so cool um and you know what is envious because envious is also super subjective i'm looking at this question and going that's a negative connotation and i i feel bad for answering honestly and secondly how honestly can I answer when it's like not a objective word? Right. Right. I completely agree. I think the the problem with that question too was that they put the measure of frequency. Like you are often envious of people. Yeah. And what is often By that it's just like yeah, is often a bad thing in this case because, you know, it makes it seem like excessive, which yeah. is a bad thing. Yeah, and envious is already a bad thing. So it's just like, now I'm often envious? Like, well, I disagree because I'm only sometimes envious of others. So... Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, and I th- there are a couple questions like that. Uh, I'm trying to find more. Um, you do not let other people influence your actions. Like, and then you can get into a debate of, well, does that mean, like, I don't work well with others? Um, and there, there are these questions that basically, you know, I don't, I don't know if I answered honestly, because I don't, I want to have an impression of myself that I'm honest with, right. but I also want to like live up to an idealistic impression of myself. Right. right. I, I think it, it's asking you to generalize a lot of personality traits that you have. And yes, yes. 
Um, and because of that, it gives you a very generalized uh, result. Like your your Myers Briggs type is a generalized like crystallization of who you are in that moment in your lifetime. Um, right. Oh, how many times have you taken the Myers Briggs test? It doesn't have to be the sixteen personalities one, but um, how many times have you taken this? I've taken it three times. The first time, I got E N F P, I believe. Um, that's mm-hmm. the one that Barack Obama is. So I Ooh. was very, very proud of the fact. Good job. And then I took it. <laughs> I took it a second time, and I didn't get that one. I actually got the one that we have now, which is E N F P T. Oh wait, what did I say earlier? E N F N F P T. Yeah, that's what we are. Um, the Barack Obama one was E N F J, I believe. Ooh. Yeah, there we um. go. Yeah, so that one is called <laughs> the protagonist, and so it changed a little. And then the third time I took it was um just earlier this week because Evan and I wanted to verify what our um you know most recent personality type is. I think yeah, we you said we knew, and I'm I'm sorry I don't remember. <laughs> you said we knew that we were the same one. Um, you didn't even like, remember <laughs> i didn't remember i feel like that was like a large reason of why we're friends actually which oh, kind of sucks you. and i'm really sorry that um that i have to like use this podcast as a more of a justification for our friendship than remembering what personality type <laughs> you are but now that we're immortalizing it in this podcast so we're here sadly i was <laughs> sadly yeah, i'm sorry that we're here sadly. talking to each other at night um but I, I took this uh, maybe five times. I, I try to take it like once a year or something. Um, okay. And like in college, it's like easy to take it every year because, you know, everyone like loves taking like the Myers-Briggs test and the Rice Purity test and the BDSM test and just like figuring out how they compare to their friends. People love to talk about themselves. Yeah, yeah. Like the people love taking the BDSM test and then sharing that information, which seems I a little... I haven't taken that one yet. We, we should take that on a future on a future episode. Um, does it tell yeah, you how should. kinky you are yeah yeah it says how like vanilla you are and stuff like that anyway i don't need um, a test to tell me okay <laughs> yeah but you I need, need you need some sort of evidence to tell to tell our listening audience <laughs> the, um, our listening audience needs to know what a sexual deviant i am i, I mean if, in case they didn't listen to the first episode uh <laughs> which you should go listen to um yeah I, I listened to it again and I was just like, oh my god, oh. like the part about you in the dark, I like laughed. Um because I was at, and I was at work listening to it, so it was not it was not <laughs> great for my uh professional impression. But anyways. People meet <laughs> all right, all right, all right. All right, let's let's <laughs> get back to people... let's, let's not talk about people my want to listen to your sexual experiences and go, damn, I didn't know that. Damn. Um and then she we... wild and yeah, then we can get sponsorships from like sex shops in San Francisco and stuff. Anyways, um, so I took I've taken this several times. I think at first I was INFP, and then I like I think as college progressed, I became more extroverted, so I became ENFP, and then I switched to ENFJ, and then PNJ just kept changing throughout college. And then I think the past two times I've taken it, including this one, I've been ENFP. Okay. Um, so okay we both got this result like at least recently. twice yeah yeah recently so um I, I actually um like as a side note i made my brothers take it and um one's isfj and one's infp so i thought that was like interesting how i like i was e um mm-hmm. and how we were all like feeling yeah so gen- do you think generally you've like stayed the same person that you've been like, yeah, I know you, like, go through, like, personal growths and right. things like that. <clears throat> but do you think you, like, you are, like, on a foundational level, the same person you were when you first took this test? No, I don't think so. The first time I took this test, I think it was in psych, like, AP psych, like, senior year of high school. Ew. So I think I was taking it just as a means of, like, hey, guys, look at me. Look, look what I am. So I didn't – I mean, I obviously take this now with a grain of salt. But I think a lot of the attributes that I see, you know, are applicable to my life and how I, you know, generally perceive my personality. Aren't there things here that you kind of think, oh, shit, that's me? Oh, definitely. I, I like to segue this into like our strengths and weaknesses as 
Oh yeah, perfect. As as people, I think there are things here that I, I do agree with, like very much, like curious and observant, and um, I don't know about excellent communicator <laughs> mo- um, half the time. Popular. Uh, pop uh, pop popular is a debatable thing. Um, popular. Poor practical skills. That's very. That's like kind of me. Um, uh, like you watch me edit our podcast. It's just like what like he is such a mess. Um, <laughs> uh but like overthink things like that's definitely me Same. uh there are things and there are things here that i do not agree with at all um know how to relax for example is something i struggle with on a daily basis like i come home from work and i'm like unable to like sit on the couch and just vegetate for five minutes like i need to be doing something whether it's like i need to pick up a video game or i need to like take the 16 personalities test to prepare for this podcast or i need to um like edit this podcast for example like um now my whole life doesn't revolve around this podcast i know i just gave a bunch of examples but um <laughs> yeah have a life. <laughs> uh, yeah i have a life like outside it's yeah it's about basically me promoting this stuff my friends um Your but life is this yeah, is this yeah my life serious? my life is basically going back into my room and waiting until the next week when we record um but <laughs> Well, shit. I, 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 <laughs> yeah, what are you doing, Walmart. Diana? <laughs> Out here by myself. Relaxing? <laughs> oh, shit. Um, I know I know how to relax. Really? Do you? I just can. You just can. I'm jealous. I, I don't know how to relax. Like, I feel stressed out when I'm not doing anything productive. Um, That's crazy. I, I found that, like, even when I'm having, like, a mental breakdown um, or, like, stressing or when I used to stress over finals – and mm-hmm. like literally having an essay deadline due in like 10 to 15 minutes but like not even reaching the page minimum i'm like all the at ease because i think i'll justify it by some type of like level like oh yeah like i'm not done with my paper but the quality <laughs> is important than the quantity <laughs> maybe the ta will overlook the fact i didn't reach 10 pages but this is some really good shit considering i just started this this morning this is you know? solid four for the uh 10 that i needed to reach um oh so my. so diana and i actually um <laughs> we had taken a class last year in the spring it's 2019 now it's in 2018 in the was it the spring or the winter it doesn't matter um doesn't about matter. it was about biographies and, and storytelling and we uh, oh did this God. partner project where we had to do a like a you had to tell a story in a recording if i remember correctly and we didn't do it until like the half hour before class um and i remember i remember freaking out about it like this is not gonna get done i still need to write something up and turn it into in, into the professor and like i remember you being really chill about it and i was just like <laughs> holy shit like i'm going to like have an aneurysm if like i have to like wait on this any longer and you were like <laughs> will be cool dude and i was like what the <laughs> fuck so like yeah like i think yeah you're right you you know how to relax and i'm like very like uptight about a lot of things because i don't know how i this is so bad but i literally don't even remember this assignment but oh my god so, based yeah, on yeah, what I, you're saying <laughs> based on what you're saying i agree like i'm pretty sure I was like, dude, <laughs> like, it's fine. that was something i just that was i just made that up like it's not even real um so like you're gonna give me shit for not remembering your personality type <laughs> but like you don't remember this foundational experience of our friendship i i just did that so a lot insulting. like my senior year i just did not give <laughs> whatever i Diana. stopped giving a shit about essay <laughs> that was our, that was our partner project uh, i thought you were but... talking about the one we filmed in little tokyo oh my but god we... you're talking you're thinking about another project that we did last minute <laughs> but we did <laughs> wait okay it's so funny because we were editing this like finals week right it's finals yeah. week of spring court i remember because this was the most recent but we literally rented we, <laughs> in the communication building at UCSD. I don't think a lot of people know this, but what's really cool is that on uh, the second floor or like the basement floor, I guess, they actually have these like editing rooms that are soundproof and everything. And they've come fully equipped, a computer, a working, you know, Adobe Premiere. And what me and Evan did is like we rented a room like super late in the night. I remember it was like. It was like 1 a.m. when we left. It was great. Yeah, there was no one out. But um, I don't know if we should mention this. No, you gotta. You can't fucking start a story and then like not follow through with it. 
All right. So we took a class on this diet. I come on. <laughs> might be, might be. Uh, basically, Evan and I had a little. We had some inspiration while we. Oh. Were this. <laughs> Wait, you didn't know I was getting that. I didn't know what you were gonna say. I was just like, you can't leave me. Hey, we just drank in the building. It was fine. Um, that Diana, you made it sound extremely sketchy. Um. It was. We drank on school property. You just we said bought... we had some inspiration. That that could mean anything, Diane. Oh, like... no, no, no. Oh, no. no <laughs> yeah, no. exactly. You you get me now? Like, No, no, no. I... Been... Whoa. I hate I you so condone. much. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit, this is a mess. Okay, okay. All right, let's be clear. Evan and I... All right, let me, let me specify. Evan and I, we have, like, a drink. We have our own drink. And that is Bailey's whiskey cream and so what we did was to celebrate us graduating and us procrastinating on our project big surprise we brought a handle of bailey's cream while we were editing and we were drunk editing the whole time and that was our and final project and we got an a i think <laughs> yeah she loved it she was just like oh my god i loved how you weave this tale of your mutual experiences about asian americanness and we were like we, j- we just did that yesterday <laughs> yeah we were like like what like i remember us being super sleep deprived because we actually went on (laughs) like an la like uh advertising marketing tour what was that uh it it doesn't matter we didn't get jobs from it so but thank you though patty i love you um but (laughs) um (laughs) but we we went to little tokyo to film this like Little like we none of us are Jap neither sorry neither of us are Japanese um yet we filmed in Little Tokyo this mm-hmm. like little little like documentary vignette about like us like ha- having shared similar Asian American experiences yeah and um we did this like the day before it was due and then we edited it the night before it was due um yes. like we were just like together for like a whole twenty four hours trying to finish this project oh, and then yeah. driving to L A and back. Um, and I was like hangry for most of the time. It was great. Um, anyways, thank you for driving because I remember just knocking out. <laughs> yeah. You, oh, and then Diana fell asleep and then like, I, I just didn't want to be friends with her anymore. Anyway. Um, so yeah, gets, gets stressed easily is another weakness that I have here. And, uh, apparently that only applies to me and not you. Um, <laughs> yeah, it really, I think that's stressed easily. Like. Hi, hi okay anyways sorry for that caveat um but it's fine oh man, it's, I don't, it was I, an anecdote that explained why we get along so well honestly no it didn't like like <laughs> you would think like man like like they suck like together they, they don't get anything done until the last minute <laughs> oh my god back to this i think so some weaknesses about us apparently do you find it difficult to focus actually i i do there was a point here that resonated with me. I think it comes... Ah, it was, like, in the category of, I think, career and, like, work habits or something. As they describe this personality type, they say that this person is not a fan of repetition, um, can get bored easily, um, and I do sort of agree with that. If I'm doing something for a tedious amount of time, and there's no, like, room for, like, um, I guess, creativity. Any, like, sort of, like, out-of-the-box type of, like, context, I can easily not be motivated to work on something. Which is probably why <laughs> I procrastinated on essays a lot. Because I would just really uh. be like, oh, like, I have an idea for this. But then I would easily sort of not align my focus well. Mm, do you... Do you find it easy to just start a bunch of things but never follow through with all of them? No, not necessarily. Um, if I I have to just be really, I just have to really enjoy something enough to to see it through well, honestly. Mm, okay. Yeah. Do you resonate with that? Like sort of kind of, no, actually I don't, I feel like you have a way better work ethic than I do. Oh, I don't. You should see all of my unfinished business uh, <laughs> that I don't that I don't like to do because I, I lose focus easily. And, you know, like, I, I, I think I'm a very, I think I'm a very undisciplined person. Like, it's it's hard, like, which sounds weird because, like, like being a, a costume designer, I guess, like, it was like, 
you have to meet deadlines. So, and like right now I'm like a writer and videographer. So it's like, you have to meet deadlines. How are, how are you undisciplined and not doing your work? But it's, um, it's easy for me to, to like get started on a bunch of stuff and then kind of have mm-hmm. like a bunch of half finished things. Did you watch Jimmy Neutron as a kid? Uh, not, not really. I oh. do know the, who he is. I know he's like a kid genius. Okay. So in Jimmy Neutron, there's a villain and his thing is he can never finish anything. Like he has a bunch of like, <laughs> really? he has this like, like a bunch of like rockets and like guns that are like half finished and nothing works. And like, it's to a fault because he can never finish anything. So he never gets to win. Uh, like his plans aren't finished. Um, and he can never finish any sentences. Like that's how scramble brained he is. <laughs> um, and I like, I resonate with that character way more than like Jimmy Neutron because that character is like, he can never finish anything because he, he loves moving on to the next thing and he forgets to follow through. Um, and like when he like finally, like I think it's therapy or something and learns to finish his projects, he becomes like a menace because he like now he's a productive, <laughs> I guess, villain to society. Um, and I feel like that would be me. Like if I like went to therapy, I actually, I do go to therapy, but I went to therapy specifically for like my, my difficulties in focusing, then I would, I would be an unstoppable force. Um, I should probably, now, you know, what, I'm going to write that down and try to go to therapy for that. Anyway. Um, Evan had a you... little self epiphany just now. Yeah. Yeah. This is, uh, I'm deciding who I want to be. No, uh, I just find that really interesting because um, I feel like you never really came off that way. I feel like you're more disciplined than me when it comes to certain things. Really? So what, what, what makes but, you feel that way though? I mean, <laughs> not really good example. Cause we just talked about how we tend to like procrastinate, but I feel like when we <laughs> collaborated on certain things in the past, I feel like you were the always the one that took initiative. And, you know, I guess that sort of implies that you kind of, just have like your shit together in a sense and then i felt like i was always kind of the one that like followed along but you know also gave input too but i was never like the one that like delegated in a sense i don't know Mm. that's just like a side thought but like obviously you know if you're feeling like these statements are valid it just really goes to show (laughs) how similar we are and how how much these traits do apply to us which is very insightful and interesting yeah, we we we're we're we of course like have a very I guess idealistic view of each other in a way, you know, especially because like right, right. Now we're now we're professional partners, so it's like, like, of course, like I think of you very highly. Like, if I did not think of you very highly, I would not be doing this right now. <laughs> <laughs> Probably um, not. Yeah, and like I think that like you we we both be or like oh yes. I have difficulties in focusing. If I had a like professional person here with me, like uh, maybe it's not the best that we both have to find difficulties in focusing. <laughs> but if I have this other person here to make me accountable for not only like my like responsibilities, but like to keep my emotions in check and to um, like maybe help me out in uh, areas like practical areas where I don't mm-hmm. maybe shine the best, then I could like do this thing really well. And I feel like like I at in relation to like the genesis of this podcast like it, it's strange that that we have this same personality type yet feel like oh yes like she Diana will fill in the gaps where I fail yet we're like <laughs> the exact same percentages within this Myers Briggs oh, test. I know. Uh, so yeah, this is the final episode because then we have now realized that we cannot go any further. <laughs> <than this. laughs> but this was our peak. Uh, yeah. We realized a lot about ourselves: online dating, attraction, yeah. yeah, gender insecurities, and now generalized personality tests. So and yeah, yeah that, that's all that you really need in your life. Like. Yeah. So, yeah, thanks for watching uh, or listening. <laughs> I said watching last time, I remember. Uh, sorry. Uh, anyways. You did. <laughs> thanks for watching. I was yeah, like, thanks what for the? watching. Were you like- Smash that like, like button. Dude. So let's move on to yeah. your, like, your friendships and, like, our romantic relationships um, in relation to us mm-hmm. as campaigners. 
Okay. Well, um, I think Evan would be a better, uh, um, I think Evan would be more insightful when it comes to relationships. So I'll cover friendship for a bit. Um, the descriptions are that this personality type is cheerful, supportive, open-minded, warm, and sincere, sincere. And I honestly think that applies to me. I actually, I don't think I'm that cheerful. Depends on my mood. But I am very open-minded. And I feel like I am quite genuine when I am talking to people and making connections. So people um, I've talked to in the past have told me that they're generally really comfortable with me. And that I'm easygoing, chill. I get the word chill quite often. They also say that, um, you know, I can like attract outgoing people but can also draw in reserve people I don't know if I necessarily agree with that but I I do feel like I can get along with a variety of people and Mm -hmm. I think that applies to Evan too I feel like you're you make great impressions on people don't you when you first meet them uh, thank you thank you um I I would like to think that (laughs) um I I mean I feel like I made a, a good enough impression on you to where we continue to be friends past oh. <laughs> first talking to each other um <laughs> do, oh do you want to talk do you want to yes. talk about that <laughs> yes so funny because you know evan talks about making a first good impression but i was my first impression of evan i found him to be really intimidating because the context that we met was that we were in we were at a fraternity social event and he was an active member at the time and I wasn't I was a pledge so I still had to go through these uh, I suppose procedures to be activated in the fraternity and one of the requirements was that I had to conduct interviews and essentially get to know active members and so here I was like I think this was like the first week of school or something it was it was really early like like within the first month of school yeah so early that I didn't really know anybody um, at UCSD and I was still even getting comfortable with the idea of going to these social events and like you know putting myself out there uh, you know despite these descriptions of me being very social you know it does exert energy to have to meet people and so there's a certain set of guidelines to interviewing an active member it's not what you would describe as like an informal natural conversation um, I guess the active has to, you know, acknowledge and be aware of the fact that you are trying to get to know them as a person. But also, it's it's a weird line, don't you think? Because you ha- kind of have to mask it as a conversation, but like really inquire about them from like a fraternity standpoint. Oh, yeah, because it's like informal yet very formal. Don't be too casual, but be chill. You exactly. Know? But be professional. Uh, yeah, you have to be professional, but you have to be like, don't be stuck up about it. Um, and there's exactly. like a fine it's line a that you thing. that you walk for people to be like, that was a good interview. Um, right. And we had a good yeah, we yeah. had a good interview because yeah. like and after the yeah, after we did. that first interview, we continued to to be friends. Um, and we like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I like I don't know why I said it like. Like, I'm, like, reciting a historical document, but... Um... <laughs> no, I remember, it's funny because, like, the interview went well. Oh, yeah, I, I forgot to mention the huge thing. Evan was my first pledge interview, so I didn't really know the etiquette. But, you know, obviously nothing bad happened yeah. because we're... Set the bar low podcast for right now. Oh, thank you, thank you. <laughs> but I remember seeing you in Com 10. Do you remember that? You were like, uh, oh, I was like yeah. in the front row and you were like walking past and you're like, hey, Diana. And in my head, I was like, oh, shit, that's an active member. Like, because when you're a pledge, you're like, oh, you know who's like an active and you know who's non active. And, you know, when you're like near an active, you're kind of like on your best behavior, so to speak. Because Oh, yeah, I didn't, you know, I didn't care. You could have done whatever you wanted. And I would have been no, like, yeah, cool. I know. But like in my head, I was kind of like, oh, shit, that's like Evan. That's that's the active i interviewed <laughs> you are <laughs> you are so formal i'm like i like yeah you you could have like tripped and fallen down the stairs and then like knocked the professor's coffee over and like i would have been like whatever um <laughs> you're like oh my god gotta sit up straight because <laughs> I, I was like oh shit <laughs> yeah. but obviously now like 
I don't respect Evan that much. So yeah, no, <laughs> it's so funny. I didn't. I'm. I never respected you. So I guess it's even. Oh, thank um, you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Um, Love it. Do you, oh, I just read that campaigners hold their friends in an unrealistic light. So all the positive shit I just said about you <laughs> is not true. Clearly, <laughs> I also I heavily heavily disagree with that statement. Do you give me social fatigue? Apparently. <laughs> <laughs> that's why that's why i need to go to bed after all the after we record all of these yeah low-key like, <laughs> yeah you're right same um, i'm doing i'm doing this because it's an art form diana uh, enfp fuck you uh, evan, whatever <laughs> <laughs> okay evan i want to know they describe e n I forgot the acronym for a second. F- they P- described... oh, are you paying attention? <laughs> Look, it's how held... I'm not that focused. Apparently. <laughs> anyways, we're, anyways. Rec- we're putting this on the internet, Diana. Okay, but look at you interrupting me because you also <laughs> lack focus. Oh, I, I'm actually doing it to mansplain to you, not to actually interrupt with you. Oh, interrupt with you? What so the fuck? Fun. Interrupt you. God. <laughs> What is going on? I can't. I all can't right, Evan. Right all right, all right, Evan. All right, Evan. I <laughs> want to know as an E N F B T. There you go. I said it. Campaigner. They describe us people as being very all in when it comes to relationships, and our warmth, excitement, and passion makes us very alluring to people. They're also very oddly perfectionist when it comes to relationships. Do you agree with any of the statements that I just mentioned? I would say if I looked through, if I looked at my past relationships, not just like the long-term ones, but like the, the online dating ones that, yes, that yeah. we've, even the that we've talked about, even mm-hmm. the brief ones and like the recent ones, I think, I, I think from a very general viewpoint, like, yes that's true like like yes you you look you want your relationship to be perfect and you you want to be idealistic about it um and i think i'm slowly like beginning to realize that that's not really a healthy way to view your relationship Mm -hmm. to be like expecting it to be perfect because your relationship's never going to be perfect like Mm -hmm. people people get divorced after like 20 30 40 years of being married like you you can't expect everything to be like a certain way. Um, so, but um, I, I, I hate disappointing my partner um, and to a fault actually. Um, and I was like realizing that like, I'm a kind of a chameleon um, okay. in a way that like I I will change my interests and like things I like based off of I don't want you to not like me anymore so it it ends up can you elaborate on that more so like for instance would you sort of like adjust a hobby or something to like fit the need of the person you're with or do you actually sort of kind of like adjust like a personality trait because I'm more of a like a like or a dislike not really a personality trait oh okay i would say okay I, it's a personality trait it's like a like i know i need to be like more confident in myself to be with this person and like that is something that that is actually worth doing like i should be more confident in myself it's something i wanted to be doing i've mm-hmm. wanted to do excuse me mm-hmm. so it's like like okay that that's worth it like i will try to be i will i will act more confidently um so but uh, what I meant was, um, so if we if we take my last long term relationship as an example, um, she did not like listening to EDM and electronic music, which is very popular among college aged oh, Asian yes. people, especially um, amongst so, our uh, frat. Uh, like a, a month, yeah, yeah, I can't talk right now, <laughs> especially amongst like the people we're mutually friends with. Um, like the people that go to raves, for example, like, um, and she did not like this kind of music because she felt like it, it got like, it went, it got really exciting and went up and up and up and then never paid off necessarily 
in the same way that um, a hip hop song does. Um, and she did not like EDM for this reason because it wasn't it wasn't energetic enough. Like it didn't. It felt very. Um, I, I think for the lack of a better word, plain to her. And as a result of that, I never listened to EDM electronic as much after I began dating her, and I never listened to it in front of her. Did you so, like it before you started dating her? Yes, I did. Um, and I remember she, we were in a car, in the car, and I was driving her around, and she was like, "Like, ugh, why are you listening to this frou frou music?" And I was like, "What the fuck?" And I got really like upset that she like. Like called was it just like being pretentious about yeah no no not that she called it frou frou <laughs> music but that she was being really like pretentious about the music we listened to, like like oh you don't listen to like these noises in your ear you sh- like you should listen to these they're way better than your noises in the ear so it's like it to me music pretentiousness is like the worst kind of pretentiousness you could have, um, because there's like no validity to it. Um, oh, I agree because it, it's it all comes down to preferences. Yeah, and like music, music is a subjective subject. Of course, yeah. So, um, so but at the same time, I found myself not listening to EDM electronic in front of her um, anymore, um, and I just kind of stopped because it was just like uh, she doesn't, she's not into it, and like I don't want her to be like judging me for it, so I'm gonna stop. Um, and like I genuinely did grow to like hip hop after that, um, mm. but uh, not. If I did not go out with her, I don't think I would have. So, um, like, I think in that way, I changed my preferences to fit the relationship because I, I didn't want her to, like, not like me anymore for doing that. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was, it was like that. Um, and, like, that's a very small example. Like, I wouldn't say, like, oh, that's a very unhealthy practice. Like, you should break up with her now. But um, it, it's not something that I would condone doing like you are allowed to like whatever you like regardless of like what your partner thinks as long as you're not hurting anyone or yourself of course of course so um i think that that's a big example of like me trying not to disappoint like even if it's disappointing in small ways like that no but say, like, i think that's a great that's not to say yeah. that's it, that's not to say like i don't majorly or have not majorly disappointed like her or other people before like there are times when I've been like dishonest and a terrible person to her. So mm-hmm. it's like, that's not necessarily like true that like, I'm like super hung up on not disappointing people. But um, there are times where I would change myself to closer fit someone that she would like or what um, people would like about me. Mm-hmm. So I think that, um, I think that resonates uh, with the the sentiment that this personality type tends to be more very empathetic, I guess, because you're matching the needs of like someone else or like adapting to their preferences just so their comfort is existing rather than yours, right? Because it's more of like a one-sided imbalance of you giving more effort i suppose okay yeah i don't know if what i said made sense <laughs> no 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 it does and it does and i'm like trying to understand it i think i th- i think it's it's just like your 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 ability to give you know it's you being open minded and being adaptable to the other person's needs and that can sometimes compromise like sort of things that you have liked you know for instance like edm music but when it came down to it you were doing this because you obviously cared you know as little as you described it to be like a little detail but i Mm -hmm. i you know my point is that your your insight on this and like your effort of you know as small as the preferences of like not listening to a certain music type really just goes to show like how warm you are and how you know how kind you are to want to adapt to someone else's needs and i think that's a strength i i could argue against that okay i think you could argue that like i'm willing to sacrifice my individualism for someone which is 
not something I would recommend anyone does. Um, and not to say like, like, yeah, in a partnership between two people, you still need to be individuals. But I think that in a way it was not healthy to do that because I wasn't being honest with what I had liked. Like I know like, and it, it's, it goes two ways. Like what you said, like it's, it, it's this level of openness that I'm willing to see what she had liked also, you know? So um, in, in, in both ways, like, I guess to me, it's a little bit true both ways because I was, um, not honest with like myself about like I I still like this and I want to be able to publicly like this in front of you, but at the same time like it was healthy because I wanted to experience the things that you liked, you know. I mean, I think it was good in the sense that you know based on what you said she because she responded so negatively to listening to it. Like, I'm assuming you just kind of didn't want that situation to occur, right? Where she's expressing that she's unhappy or dissatisfied with her music taste. But, like, did you end up... I think it's unhealthy or negative if, like, you... Did you end up, like, resenting her because of it? Because you were obviously, like, hindering, you know, that, like, music exposure. But I I thought of it as a way of, like, you know, because she was, like not happy about it you're kind of just like oh you know i won't do this because i care for you yeah yeah, type of thing yeah um yeah i I think maybe i'm looking at it a little too pessimistically so so in a way like i i I was happy to do these things like i don't regret doing anything um so you know maybe maybe i'm looking at it too like like oh she's my ex and i like like resent her for for making me do this and like that's not true like um i think i'm just more looking at like no, no, what yeah. did i what did i do to not disappoint no i mean i i see like the value of it in both ways i guess be, um the timeline you know changes the context of it because at the time you're like happy to do it but when you look back now you felt like you were maybe like compromising your individuality a bit but like either way like you you know there's yeah it was, there's insight it was for the good ways. of that it yeah. was for the good of that relationship yeah. not like for the not for the detriment of my individuality <laughs> so i mean you you can listen to edm music all you want in the car now right <laughs> God, yes because i'm no longer in a relationship thank you <laughs> you're welcome <laughs> god just any um, reminder i just wanted to remind you that you're single <laughs> Thank you, thank you. I, I I am single for all of you out there. Hey, I am too. And so is Diana, apparently. So <laughs> DM me. Don't DM. Actually, don't do not, DM me. Do not don't. DM her. She's don't. going to like complain to me about the DMs she's getting. I'm a block um, you, son. Don't DM me. Yeah, block. Pl- yeah, please block me. Yeah. Um, so you don't have to do DM any of this again. Evan. Evan needs some. <sighs> Actually, yeah, cute, though. I mean, we just talked about this before we started recording, but Evan and I are kind of yeah. just like over dating right we now. We are both taking a break yeah. from online dating because it's it's just too much right now. Um, there, there's a lot of things that love. Yeah, health, career. Um, I have not been looking at career aspirations as much as I should be because I've been looking at romantic ones and I just need to take a break oh, for a yeah. second. I found myself like... Uh, um, sort of being distracted over like I guess social and like you know romance relationships so I would tend to go to those type of like subreddits but mm. you know it's time for me to go back on like funny okay. or like what the fuck you know I need to just kind yeah, of you're, you gotta <laughs> go on your productive subreddits <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. We should start yeah. a subreddit. <laughs> we should start a subreddit? Uh, when, what would we start? Yeah, when we get, I don't know. When we get a following, we should start a subreddit. Ooh, um, aspiring Asian Americans in Hollywood or some shit like that. In media. Um, media might be broader. We'll, um, we'll, anyway, we'll, take, spe- oh. we'll, we'll think about it. 
Speaking of our career aspirations, <gasps> uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> what a segue. Um, you sneaky um, box. Uh, so we're going to talk you, about ENFP. What a transition. Wow. Wow. wow, wow. I, I know. I know. We, we could say it again if we want. Um, <laughs> so, anyways, anyways. So the, cam- the campaigner careers. Um, oh, yeah. So... Camp, uh, I'm going to quote the 16 personalities website. Uh, campaigners are fascinated by new ideas, both in terms of developments in fields they are already familiar with and when new subjects come along. The trick for people with a campaigner personality type is to take advantage of this quality, this wonder with the magnificent breadth and detail in the world, and to use it to propel themselves further and deeper than others are willing or able to go. So I think based off of what i just read happiness and excellence are um they cohabitate together in our career um aspirations Mm -hmm. i see that uh yeah and and i'm not saying that like this podcast is the hot shit i mean i feel like it is but um (laughs) i'm not saying that like everything i do is like like golden and amazing but like it it, it's all it it is to arrive there at some point like that is the goal is to arrive at being golden at some point i mean um, i not, think and not set i think this podcast is like maybe not hot shit but like warm like warm shit just toasted warm, type of shit <laughs> toasted shit <laughs> like touchable like warm. palpable but like not hot but you know my <laughs> point <laughs> My point is that, like, I... <laughs> Shut up, Evan. Your decibels are going to be so loud. I'm going to have to change it later. We can't cut this out. You, you, I need palpable shit in Dude, our, our... <laughs> when Evan laughs, the decibels go so high. Like, you know, there's, like, a green-yellow range of, like, how your audio levels are. Evan goes, like, through the roof. Like, it goes across the red, and it goes over the grid. It's crazy. I'm sorry. It, it's I, I turn away when I laugh now. Um, I'm actually I haven't spoken into the mic at all. I've been speaking like towards it, um, and oh, I feel like that's been helpful. I think mine um, might be a little louder today because I'm. It's like directly. Perfect. It's fine. It's fine. Anyway, like as close as possible. Anyway, um, my point. So yeah, the the, the podcast. My is point. Warm shit. <laughs> yes, warm shit. Uh, my point is that I also enjoy, you know, whatever task or project I'm doing right now. Like, it. Wow, I really lost my train of thought because that was a huge. <laughs> you, you, shouldn't have, you shouldn't have used bad metaphors for this podcast. I'm just trying to, you know, visualize things. Um, so, uh, do you. Do you. Um, do you do well in routines? I can. Like, I don't want people to think like, oh, like, you know, ENFPs, they're so erratic if they do like the same thing twice in like, you know, two days in a row, they're going to go insane. <laughs> but like, you know, there is comfort in doing um, a routine, you know going to school, going to work, going to the gym. Sure, like I'll do it, but I won't necessarily enjoy it. And I will often try to find something else to do that excites me. So You like variety. Yes. I'm yes, a I variety am. type of gal, Evan. That I am the exact same way. And I um, think this is <laughs> this is why yeah, I'm the exact same way. <gasps> um, Shit. I, I think I think that, you know, that's why project-based work works well for the both of us because we need variety. Right. Like why theater was so uh, appealing to me and why videography is so appealing to to us and why filmmaking oh, is like, yes. like an end goal that we both have because project-based work, like, you don't like something, it's going to be over in, like, a few months. Yes, so, yes, like, yes, yes. you're good. And, like, I think that was, like, a large appeal of college to me, actually. It was just, like, you don't like this class? Don't worry. Just blink and it'll be over. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, that's um, what I really liked about the quarter system, actually. 
yeah, it was just I didn't have if I didn't like something, it was gone. But if I the the other side of that is if I liked something a lot, it was gone. It was really short quickly. lived. Yeah. Yeah, I miss you, Patty. Um, but <sighs> Patty was uh, Pat- an Patty excellent, is our, um, excellent professor. Is our media professor in college um, that we both admired yeah. very much. Um, I love you, Patty. She, Anyways, um, she's amazing. She actually she like is. motivated me to be doing what we're doing now because she gave me a lot of validation about my um, mm-hmm. career choice and. <sighs> what a role model. Uh, Pat- Patricia on uh, is a professor at UCSD, and I think she is responsible for why we are doing this right now. Um, because so Diana and like the class and I like and, and with Patty went to the NBC Seven studio in San Diego, um, and we both like sat at the like the news desk and just like pretended like we were like delivering Anchor a people. report in in um yeah we pretend we're being anchor people in our like weird like raincoats um because it was like pouring that day oh, and yeah, shit. Oh, yeah, I remember. it was like really funny i like cringe i think about it um and we like did this like little pose and i remember showing it to patty and patty had told me like hey i think that would be really fun to watch you should do something about that um, and it was and just a side I, comment. It was just a. It, it was, was a like, side comment. Yeah. It was like the smallest so, clip of me and Evan just like, candidly talking about something. But she was like, "You guys should like collaborate and do something." And yeah, we were like, and then we okay. did we did a little project like the next quarter, and then now we're here, um, because educators are very important role models in everyone's lives, and you should respect them very much because they can push you to do things you didn't know you would want to go to school um yeah go to school go to school kids. stay in school or if it's not your thing don't go to yeah, school then, or uh, drop out dropping out is fine too <laughs> drop, drop, yeah we, we thought about that too <laughs> 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 um, um but a- anyways so so yeah what i was saying earlier was um like the we i i think neither of us really liked how like regimented things can be how like you like military service is what comes to mind uh when i think of like oh, the yes. the opposite yes. of like yes. what i would want in a career it's just like like it's yes. not that like i i mean i one i don't think that i'm i'm up to like psychologically or physically handling the needs of being in the military because i'm kind of weak um and anyone <laughs> who knows me will probably go yeah um but i think that the the strict like day in day out same thing like you follow this instructional routine every day right. is something that does not appeal to me very much i um, when i think about the military it no it's just really interesting that you mentioned that because i have some insight to share because i <laughs> god damn it i recently met somebody and he was in the military and he was he made this comment about you know, being back home because he was on home leave, like on vacation to like see his series. Yeah. Okay. Or not vacation, I would say. Okay. Um, yeah, he basically had time off like to visit uh, family and friends and whatnot uh, before he was getting deployed. And the comment he made was that like, you know, whenever I'm back, what surprises me the most is that you guys have so much time. He's like, you know, I'm up at like three or four in the morning already and like, by six or seven i've like done this this and this but it's like oh you guys have all this like free time and like in my head i was kind of like yeah i mean that's the life for me like being able to have all the freedom to like yeah you know pursue my creative endeavors um you know nothing bad about like what he he does it's just you know he's he's used to a routine obviously um and this like sense of discipline but you know, it did kind of validate who I was as a person because he was also asking, like, you know, where I wanted to live in the future, you know, maybe, like, post-career or whatever. And um, I told him, yeah, probably, like, L.A. for work mostly. Um, You know, hopefully I'd want to, like, settle down in, like, a more suburban area. But, like, L.A., like, the busyness is where I see myself. And his answer was that, like, you know, after he was, 
you know, done with the military. He just wanted to like settle down to like a suburban city in like Oregon, like by the forest and like meet a nice girl and have like three kids. And I was kind of just like, nope, 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 nope. Yeah. Well, that was interesting. I just really disagreed. Like, he was like, oh, so you're the type of girl that, like, probably, like, will eat avocado toast, right, and Uber everywhere. And I was like, probably. I'm fine wow. with it. Is he, is he, does he work for 16 personalities? Because he's making some <laughs> fat generalizations about you. He, um, I mean, he was quite insightful as a person, but just so contrastive. Yeah, yeah, so contrastive. Uh, I mean, in, insightful in that it helped you bring insight to be like, oh, <laughs> not him. Um, but... Yeah, like yeah. I think there's a there's a status quo and a sense of schedule which like I can appreciate, um, and because it's comfortable, um, but it's just it's something that would that would tire me easily easily gets tedious. Like I I totally yeah, agree it, on that. And like and what he explained us is like ideal for like moving to Oregon, meeting someone and having a couple kids like that it that that rural slash suburban lifestyle is the same thing. In terms right, of like yes, status yes. quo schedule, like yes. what are you going to do? You're going to he's gonna like find his civilian job. You're going to go to work uh, or stay at home, whatever your right. role is, and like someone's gonna pick up the kids. Someone's gonna like make dinner. So you're yes. both gonna, and you're both gonna do the same thing every day for the next forty years. Like Evan, that is you totally get me. I didn't even need to say it, and you understood what I was getting at. <laughs> yeah, just like the implications like, of that. I was already like heavily not seeing eye to eye with him yeah and well was he respectful of it at least yeah i mean um it was just like pillow talk like you know future aspirations you know just normal sort of just kind of like thoughtless i mean i guess not really thoughtless but you know just like sort of thoughtful banter um Mm -hmm. he was really nice about it it just really made me open my eyes and think oh that's not me you know obviously because if someone says a statement you easily agree or disagree with that statement and so i think that did validate more who i who i am as a person because i mean even you agree right like the idea of like a you know (sighs) repetitive day possibly as like you know a domestic dad or something is just not really appealing no it's not i i do a nine to five right now um and I, I'm very thankful that I get to work from home on, on Fridays, but, um, it, the, the drawl of being nine to five is not something that I want to always be doing unless it's like really, I guess, creatively challenging work. Yes. Um, because what I, what I do right now is I, I do technical writing for a tech company and I make videos for them. And these are, these are largely the same things over and over again it's like a new feature for our product came out please write like this entry in like the user manual and also make a video version of that entry so it's like it, it, it's a new project every day but it's not something that is um it's not big enough for me right you see so you see like um... it, it's creative work but it is still regimented Right. So it's like, it's it's the regiment disguised basically, um, and and well, I I'm able to like trick myself right now into being like, oh, like I'm saving money, and I like it's repetitive, but it like it is still relevant to what I want to end up doing. So it for now it's fine, um, but I would I would like it to become something more. Yeah, like you know it's fine for now, but you obviously have dreams and aspirations that you're you're chasing so yeah we both do oh so yeah we do oh yeah Uh, hence this podcast uh thank you patty (laughs) Patty. but uh yeah and i think we just want i think you know dream big shoot high and hope that you fall within the stars or something like that yeah and hope and hopefully you get there like i know like especially as Asian Americans, it's a little bit harder for the both of us. 
Um, but you know, you can't, you need to be your own role model sometimes. So I think oh, like, yeah. it's scary, but it's scary, but we need to, as campaigners, we're going to pursue these new ideas and developments. Yeah. We can't just like leave it to someone else to do it. Mm-hmm. Do you have any last thoughts, Diana, about 16 personalities, um, I... about the test, about being ENFP? Honestly, I'm I'm really glad we're friends. No, I, I am too. And uh, like, I know it just said, so I know it just said that it was like, yeah, we're gonna get really simpy right now. I'm sorry. Um, uh. like, like, I know it said like, oh yeah, you unrealistically hold your friends in light. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, maybe to a degree for some people. Cause like, like I have to, cause they're not that great. Um, but, uh, I, I think that being the same personality type grants us an understanding of like each other's like goals and like who we are as people because like i feel like for us it's like easier to read each other than it is to you know read an isfp or an infp yeah. for example um and and i like I, that contradicts my like beginning statements that this the myers-briggs test is designed to encourage understanding between people you have differences with but also to maybe strengthen, strengthen the understanding between people who you share the same types with. I feel like we've never been as close. Obviously spiritually, not physically, because you're in SF. <laughs> as of yes, this moment, still, right now. As of this, well, yes, yes. As of right now, we are still far. But yes. I think that what motivates and inspires us is like our similar things. And we see in like, we dream about the same things. We do, um, we do. Um, maybe not like the same paths, but the same like things. And I, I think we're both willing to like challenge ourselves in this field and like in these relationships and in these friendships. Yeah, I mean, it's a heck a lot easier to try to overcome challenges if you have a friend with you. And Evan is literally that friend. Oh. <laughs> Oh, this podcast got hella simpy. Are you crying? Um, are you crying? No, I'm not crying. Oh, no, not it sounded crying. like you were. I'm gonna cut off my yeah, part no, so I it can... sounds like you were. <laughs> no, I can fake cry really well. I think. Um, <laughs> but you fake. I yeah, I'm yeah. Fake to you, because you hold me in too high regard. Yeah, but um, I'm also mutually <laughs> fake. So who's losing here? <sighs> Both of us. Okay, okay, we should, we should. Let's conclude. Anyways, um, anyways, listeners, thank you for listening thank to you. our podcast this week. This has been D and K with Diana and Evan. Gracias. We love you so much. Come on. Um, and goodbye. We will see you soon. Bye.